You can also see him on FS1 and Fox Spectrum Sports. Nat, he's all over the place. You catch him on Twitter at cjacobson23, former Stanford U standout. Casey Jacobson now on the right to it, I guess, on here on Fox Sports Phoenix. How you doing there, Case? Rock, Manuch, Jimmy B, we got it all here. How you been, bud? I'm great. You guys know um, I'm in the throes of college basketball season. That's my uh, personal heaven. Um, lots to talk about in college hoops. And the last uh, ever um, Pac-12 basketball season. That's so come to a close. So I'm trying to soak it all in. And and it's uh, you know each week we we discuss a lot of a lot of a lot of Pac-12 basketball, and it's just unfortunate we we came off a real big high in football in the Pac-12 yeah. and the success it had, and we were hoping that it would continue into basketball. And unfortunately, it's been kind of disappointing. Uh, would you agree that there aren't more teams out there that are uh, that are at least being ranked at this point? So, yes and no. Okay. Yes, I am disappointed that um, the non-conference for men's basketball was a disappointment. And right. that's really important in college basketball. If you, if you don't perform in the non-conference, then you're going to beat each other up in the conference and fewer teams are going to make the NCAA tournament. Um, so, yes. But no is we cannot judge any season until it's all said and done, man. Right? You guys remember... The Arizona Wildcats last year, one of the top five teams in the country for most of the season, got a really high seed, and they lose the first round to Princeton and only score 55 points in that game. Um, I think a lot of Wildcats fans would trade an up-and-down roller coaster regular season and then finally get it right and get on a nice little run in the postseason and make a Final Four. And I still think that that is absolutely on the table for Arizona and maybe another uh, Pac-12 school like Oregon or Colorado or Utah. I and mean, that's on the table. So until we hit April, yeah. then we can come back and, and, and say, hey, was it a disappointment or not? Casey, when you're when you're doing a lot of these games, can you kind of tell if, if that team has it or that team could make that proverbial run? Or does that all go out the window, like you said, with U of A getting beat early on? I thought, man, that's a for sure team. So is there anything in particular – it's a common denominator where you can go, they should go far into the tournament. Oh, yeah. I have my own little personal formula. And it's also my eyes, too. Like, I've, I've, co- I've followed college basketball and worked college basketball for the last decade. I, I kind of know what a Final Four team looks like. But at the same time, you guys remember last year's Final Four at San Diego State and Florida Atlantic. Okay, And anybody who was telling you that Florida Atlantic was going to make a Final Four was crazy. Um so there is not, a, like, when you get to a one-and-done tournament, like, if the, for instance, if the NBA were a one-and-done tournament, there would be a lot of upsets. And, they're, you know, the, the best teams wouldn't win every year. Um, it's a, um, so, it, so that just introduces kind of a, a, a different dynamic, and that's why we love March Madness. But you ask the question of, like, can I tell watching a team or covering a team, do they have it? And the answer would be yes. There are certain criteria that I believe you have to have to have it. You have to have size and athleticism. There's a physical component about being a, an elite basketball team that can make a Final Four or win a national championship. Then you have to have good backcourt play, whether that's a really elite point guard or just guys who handle the ball because those are the decision makers in basketball. Like a quarterback and a running back in football, they're the ones that have their hands on the basketball the most. And then you need to have at least one good big guy to anchor a defense, to protect the rim, um, and to be a steady presence. And then you just kind of have to fill in with certain spots. It would help if you could shoot threes. But that's not necessarily a prerequisite for making a Final Four. But there are a few things that you need to have, and there are several, uh, several teams that have them. The last thing I'll say is this. I believe that every year there's about, I don't know, 25 to 30 teams that can make a Final Four. However, I only believe that there is a, a handful, maybe a little bit more than a handful, that can actually win a national championship. There's a big difference between making a Final Four and cutting down the net. Casey Jacobson is our guest on the Right Toyota guest line. Casey, my question is this. You are a star at Stanford. Uh, Pac-12 schools have parentally produced NBA players left and right who have become stars in the NBA. When it was first announced that the Pac-12 was toast, 
What went through your mind, and how devastated were you? Um, yeah, I was probably the second most devastated person that I know behind Bill Walton. Um, it, to me, my, my, my first reaction is, how could this possibly happen? I know that the Pac-12 as a conference has struggled in comparison to some of the other power conference um, power conferences in the country, um, revenue-wise, football relevancy. Like I, under- I understand all that. But to have those things result into teams just leaving the conference and then eventually it imploding, that was not a thought that I ever had at any time um, until, you know, what, six months ago, seven months ago. Even when USC and UCLA left, it still didn't even cross my mind that it could possibly happen. Um, I was born and raised on the Pac-10 and 12 conference. I played in it. Uh, It means a lot to me. And uh, I, I'm so, so sad um, to, to think about it. Um, I will be a part Two. of the Fox um, national TV coverage. We have the Pac-12 men's basketball tournament this year. Like we, we okay. trade every year between ESPN and Fox. Fox has it this year. And my boss has, um, has assigned me to uh, be on the call for the game. Nice. And uh, I'm already kind of getting teary-eyed just even thinking about yeah, sure. um, signing off on that last game. It's, it's devastating to me personally. And I know a lot of other people feel it. Case, our last one, it has to do with uh, the three Pac-12 teams right now that are at least being projected in the NCAA tournament, Arizona, Utah, and Colorado. They're the highest rated teams right now when you look at the net rankings. These teams are a perfect 33 and 0 at home, but they're 3 yeah. and 12 in conference road games. How will that play into the selection committee, knowing that these teams may be put in, uh, well, will be put in areas that are not home? One minute. Yeah, uh, no, it's a good point. Those numbers are sobering. However, first of all, I'll say that's not great. Okay, yeah. <laughs> there's no way I could, I, I can't, I can't put lipstick on a pig, right? Yeah. Okay, so. <laughs> It's not great. However, can I also say, look around the country in college basketball and tell me a team that is actually really good on the road. Mm -hmm. You can't find them. There are very few that exist. Maybe the Houston Cougars might be one, but everybody is struggling on the road. This isn't just a Pac-12 issue, but like I understand what you're saying. Here's the other silver lining uh, for fans and people need to understand. The NCAA tournament is not played on hostile uh, floors. It is played on a neutral court. Good point. Very so again, good point. I go back to, I, I go back to the first question you asked me. Like, what, what do you have? Do you have it? Don't worry so much about how a team looks on the road. Just look at their total body of work, who they are as a team, what are their strengths and weaknesses, who have they beat, are they good enough to beat the top 10, 15, 20 teams in the country? on a regular basis. And if they are, you have a chance to advance deep uh, in the tournament. If you do not, you don't have a chance, and you're probably going to be either out of the tournament or you're not going to make it to the second weekend. Casey, we love your work, man. Thanks for jumping on with us today. Hopefully we catch up with you as we get closer. As you know, it's in our backyard, so we're pretty excited about the Final Four. So thanks so much for the time today. Absolutely. Have a good week, guys. That's Casey Jacobson. You can follow him on Twitter at cjacobson23. He'll be calling the Utah State, San Diego State on Saturday. That game is on Fox, and then he's got Stanford at Arizona on Sunday on FS1. Well, coming up, it's our football at 50. You'll hear 